Hey YouTube, James Sane here. So a quick video on whether you should be shooting in 4K or 1080p. All right, and make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I have two big tips. One is how to increase the quality of your audio. An inexpensive solution, only $20 to help improve the sound quality of your video. And number two, if you're starting a YouTube studio and you're wondering what focal length do I need to shoot at, my YouTube studio is only so much space, what kind of lens do I need? I have a great video tip for you. Stick around for that. All right, let's get to the 4K videos now. Okay, so if you're shooting videos to upload to YouTube, 1080p will certainly suffice. Now, if you record in 4K and then upload in the highest quality you can, it will make a difference and it will look slightly better. But because of the compression algorithms with YouTube, it's not a major difference in my opinion. But the reason is I think you should shoot in 4K because it allows you to be more creative. And so what do I mean by being creative? So, well, the most creative thing on YouTube on your YouTube video should be what you're talking about. In addition to that, adding some camera movement really adds visual interest. So if you can do that, that's nice. For instance, here I'm shooting this particular scene on a great Video Maker 32 inch slider, which adds a nice visual interest to the scene. Also, I have an additional camera so that I can shoot from additional angles. So we do these things using a slider and a second camera to add some visual interest to the presentation and hopefully it's rather subtle that people don't even notice they just think hmm, there's something nice about this but what if you don't have a slider so how does 4k help you add visual interest to your videos let's take a look at that okay so here's an example where the great video maker slider is turned off now with the second camera you can add visual interest by changing uh, view. So one thing you can do when you're shooting at 4k and you import it into a 1080 uh, sequence then your 4k video footage has to be decreased by 50% so this gives you a lot of leeway in as far as positioning your subject and as far as camera movement so you can try and simulate a second camera that's a close-up camera an example of that is here now while you have changed the camera composition you've zoomed up so it gives the impression that you have two cameras, one far away and one closer. And so it does add some visual interest. Now, some people overdo this. They jump back and forth, back and forth. And so in my opinion, just like when you're giving it, I give a lot of speeches to groups of people. As you're talking to people in the audience, you should not just be talking and then just scanning the whole audience and just changing randomly. You basically complete a thought or come to the end of a sentence then move on to the next point and you complete that point or the topic that you're talking about and then you talk to the other part of the audience. So it's the same way in video making that if you're going to zoom up, it's when you came to the end of the sentence or if you're talking about a new subject and then that's when a logical place would be to zoom back and forth. Okay, so another example might be that you got your composition off and you didn't really notice it until post uh, when you're doing your post uh, production that you want to fix it. Well, when you shoot in 4K, uh, you have some of those options available to you. Let's just say you got too much headroom. So if I was shooting this here, so if I was recording this and it's like, well, this is really too much headroom, I can fix this if I shot in 4K and I'm putting in a 1080 uh, P sequence. So if I was recording this and it's like, well, this is really too much headroom, I can fix this if I shot in 4K and I'm putting in a 1080p sequence. Okay. Another example, I generally follow the rule, the, the rule of thirds and I position myself on one side of the frame or the other. And let's just say you didn't quite do that, you didn't quite get it where you want it. Let me move this a little bit here. Alright, so let's say you saw, shot yourself and you're in the center of the frame and you wanted to move yourself to one side or the other. Well, you can do that. All right, so let's say you saw, shot yourself and you're in the center of the frame and you wanted to move yourself to one side or the other. Well, you can do that very easily if you shot in 4K and you're using a 1080p sequence. So shooting in 4K, aside from video quality, allows you a lot more leeway in your post-production of your videos. So another time that it would come in handy if you weren't quite positioned 
in the screen where you wanted to be and you wanted to have something pop up on the side of the screen hey there how you doing yes that's you we're talking about you so just let me talk to the audience so you could position yourself in the screen so that the per I, I yes really okay let me, that's that's great but let me just finish this here so that you could if you had something to share the screen with you could bring that in here how about yeah, yeah, see, about, you know yeah. what? I'm going to go ahead and ask you I to step something. out. I want to say something. Okay, so then there's an example of where 4K would come in handy that you have some leeway to do that kind of photo editing, that kind of video editing. Okay, and so the final thing that I like to do that to kind of simulates the slider type motion, if you shoot in 4K, insert into a 1080 sequence, then you can use your uh, is, well, in Premiere Pro, I use the positioning of the X, the Y, and the scale so that in my keyframe it so that I can slowly move the video as uh, the person's talking, and then that helps get close to a simulation of a slider. Now, it's not exact, and I've been doing it here for the last uh, few seconds. Uh, hopefully, it's not extremely noticeable, but it adds some visual interest as the camera zooms in or zooms out and goes left or right. Just add some visual interest beyond just a boring, static, straight on shot. Okay, so there's a few ways that I use 4K video. Now, shooting in 4K, is it higher quality than 1080p? It certainly is. Uh, does it make that big of a difference on YouTube? Mm, I don't think so, so much. But when you shoot in 4K and then you import into a 1080p sequence, it allows more creativity and gives you more flexibility, especially if you have some minor um, errors to correct in post-production. It's much easier if you shot in 4K. Okay, so here's how 4K can help add some dynamic movement when you import it into a 1080p sequence. If you don't have a slider, if you don't have a second camera, if you don't have somebody filming you on a gimbal, you can add some dynamic uh, camera movement to give some visual interest to what you're talking about. So there are more things that you can do. These are just a few of the common examples that I use to add dynamic visual interest to my videos. And hopefully this will help you in your video making process. Okay, and so a way to improve the audio quality of your YouTube video is click on the link here. This will lead you to an inexpensive solution of how to improve the quality of your videos. Also, if you're starting your YouTube studio and you're wondering what lens, what focal length do I need to shoot with, click on the video here and this will help you in setting up your YouTube studio or if you're making any tweaks and you're wondering what kind of focal length do I need to shoot at, I only have so much space in my YouTube studio, this video will help out a lot. All right, thanks so much. So if you like the content that I'm putting out, hit the like button, I would greatly appreciate that and consider subscribing to my channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video when it comes out. All right, thanks so much. And this is being filmed during the coronavirus. We're all at home. I'm in Florida. Not a mandatory lockdown, but you know, I think that might be coming. But anyway, hopefully we'll talk to you next week. All right, thanks so much.